It is Friday, May 29th. Welcome to our COVID-19 Task Force Daily Update. I'm Joe Delarone. On the program today, Lisa Westaway will be here along with Lloyd Phillips. And from the Peacekeepers, the Chief, Dwayne Zachary, will be here. We're just a few days away from the opening of uh, business here in Ghanawaga. So uh, I know lots of people are busy. Lloyd will give a little update on that. In the meantime, though, Lisa Westaway has a few things to tidy up uh, some loose ends, and we bring her on right now. Lisa? Thank you. So I just have some really quick updates today, mostly reminders of things that have been said during the week. Um, firstly, uh, just a reminder that the testing site is still open, and if you are having any symptoms of COVID-19, please call the testing site for to be tested. Uh, just a little update, we've had approximately uh, five people tested over the last few days, so it's been very quiet. That's great if uh, there are no symptoms. However, uh, if you do have symptoms, it's really important that you be tested so that you're aware. Um, whether you be tested or not, again, if you are having any symptoms, you should self-isolate for 14 days. Anybody who's tested should self-isolate for 14 days. Um, so just, uh, it's just a reminder of the importance of that, especially as we move forward with reopening of business. If you're sick, you need to stay home. Uh, another reminder is this Sunday, May 31st, I believe it is, we're having the clothing drop-off, the summer clothing drop-off. Uh, clothing should be in a sealed or closed tied plastic bag, labels removed and well identified, um, and we'll be collecting the clothing at the testing site. Um, another reminder, there's no Saturday clinic. Uh, I bring that up because the Saturday clinics have been quiet, maybe because of the nice weather, but just a reminder that the physicians do have spots available for people who are not well or who need to be, uh, who need to see a physician, and those spots are available during the week. So if you do need to see a doctor, we urge you to call. There'll be uh, an evaluation done by phone to see whether you could come in or whether you could be evaluated by phone, but those spots are available so it's really important to call in don't think that uh, we're not open for business your physicians are there and they're uh, waiting to see you or speak with you so please call if you're not well um, also, uh, just so, uh, of note, I mentioned it this morning uh, on the radio, but uh, w we've been hearing that dental clinics, optometry clinics, ophthalmology clinics are reopening uh, next week. So we wanted just to advise you that at KMHC we will not be opening uh, those clinics. Uh, the main reason for that is the extensive um, adaptations that are required in order to open safely. We're not able to, uh, and many, actually many locations will not be opening either next week even though the ministry has advised that it's possible because the directives are much too uh, large to be able to implement and such so quickly so it's really important that when we are ready to open that we do so safely and we'll advise you uh, we'll advise you when we're ready to do so um, Another uh, comment that I wanted to make, and it's based on some a lot of questions that I've been receiving uh, with respect to the reopening of business and uh, the meetings uh, or the gatherings that are allowed up to eight people while maintaining uh, physical distancing. Um, the question that I get is, well, you know, can we come visit at inpatient? So I just wanted to uh, let everyone know that those directives of no visits at inpatient are still in place. In the hospital is still closed to visitors and that will be for quite some time so opening up inpatient will not be part of the first phases it'll be part of the last phases uh, particularly because um, we have to monitor as we move forward the impact uh, on our community as we as we reopen and it's really important that we uh, protect uh, the inpatient department as much as possible and even the staff at KMHC will have to take you know particular extra precautions in order to ensure that they're not bringing the virus back into the hospital. So I just wanted to answer that question publicly because I've received uh, comments or questions uh, quite a lot over the last few days. Um, 
As we move forward throughout the summer, we're going to reevaluate, uh, of course, uh, as we follow, as we implement another health check in a few weeks and see exactly what's happening in the community. And we, we will probably be consulting you uh, regarding that in the future. But for the time being, there's still no visitation at uh, inpatient. Again, uh, we do have uh, family members who will call the nursing station and ask that their loved ones uh, go onto the balcony so that they can uh, be across the street from the hospital and either uh, play the guitar or speak to their loved ones uh, from a distance. We're, we accommodate those requests uh, when, when, they're, when, when we're asked and so please don't be shy if you want to do that and of course we still have iPads and, and uh, telephone calls that we are continuing to do um, on a continuous basis. Um, so I guess that's the last of my updates. The only reminder is as we move into the next week that we all uh, have a responsibility to the collective. Again, I'm repeating myself, but uh, the responsibility is for physical distancing at all times with people who do not live in your household. And uh, if you're sick, you have symptoms, that you stay home. Uh, if you've been tested, that you stay home. That you, uh, so that if you walk into a business that you don't feel is safe, that has not implemented infection prevention control control measures that you walk out, um, that you take responsibility for your health, for your safety, for your family's safety, uh, and for the community's safety. So uh, with that, I wish you a great weekend. Thank you. And thank you very much, Lisa. Um, with uh, the opening of business only three days away now, uh, Lloyd Phillips has been busy. They've been tying up some of the loose ends and doing some uh, lots of work over the last few days and he'll update us on a busy week. Lloyd? Uh, thank you very much, Joe, uh, Lisa. Uh, yeah, this week was certainly a, uh, a very busy week uh, here at the, at the task force and uh, obviously the, um, the operational aspects that we do on a day-to-day -day basis uh, certainly has been keeping us busy uh, trying to target um, the uh, June 1st deadline uh, we did have a full task force meeting this afternoon, and where where we, we looked at the at the whole uh, the whole picture, so to speak, on on our, all the pieces in place, you know, for us to have a successful opening on uh, on June first. And again, the the short answer there was was yes, uh, we do believe that we are in a good position to continue moving forward uh, with the evolution, uh, you know, with this pandemic and evolution of the uh, phased in opening, you know, uh, of of Ganawage economy. Uh, and we believe this could be done in, in, in a safe manner. Uh, it could be done in, in, in a structured manner to, to uh, minimize any possible negative impact uh, on, on our community. Uh, again, we're, we're asking every, every business is required to, uh, to uh, have a, a health inspection uh, to be done prior to opening. I know the inspectors have been out there uh, very busy in the past few days uh, and they will be remain available now throughout the weekend. You know, if, if you're in, in the process now of getting your, your establishment ready, uh, you will have inspectors available you know, for, uh, for the weekend uh, to inspect your business, issue a health certificate, or also to answer any, any of your questions that, that you may have. So uh, please feel free to, to reach out uh, to them. Uh, we'll have somebody uh, on the daytime available to answer your phone calls and direct you in the, in the appropriate way. Uh, just uh, again, as a reminder, you know, uh, even though uh, phase one of business reopening is, is, a, is a fairly substantial uh, segment of the, um, of the uh, uh, economics of, of our community, there are still you know, significant portions that of the community, uh, both on the economic side and, and organizational side, who, who are not opening. Uh, so of the, you know, uh, we all know the, the gaming establishments in, in, in the community bring in a, a substantial amount of people. Uh, they, they are not part of phase one, uh, as well as you know, the, the bars and social clubs in the community are, are not part of phase one. Uh, you know, and we know these, these establishments bring in uh, a lot of people. You know, it, it's mainly due to the, the inability to social distance and as, as well as uh, the, uh, you know, the high contact uh, that, that, is, that is in these areas uh, that it makes it concerning and we have to wait to see some of the impacts of phase one, uh, have some clear guidelines on, on, on how these establishments can open uh, safely. You know, uh, as mentioned yesterday as well, I mean, that also includes um, 
you know, areas such as, as, as hair salons, beauty parlors, uh, things of that nature, where again, obviously, if you're, if you're getting a haircut, then and such that you, you're, you're very close to the individual. So it's not to say that they're, that they're gonna have to wait uh, no, for, for forever, but we wanna make sure that we do that, you know, again, in a safe and proper manner. Uh, as well, in terms of community organizations, uh, just to be clear, uh, June 1st, uh, you know, the, the uh, measures in place or, or the work that's in place for, say, MCK and uh, KSCS and, and other organizations in the community remains as is, uh, just because the, the, the segment of the population uh, of the business uh, activity that's, that's gonna resume, uh, the organizations are, are going to remain operating uh, under emergency measures, operating you know, on essential services only on, until such time, uh, again, as, as it deems to be safe to start uh, you know, reintegrating you know, more people into the, work, in, into the workforce. So that's another measure you know, uh, that, that we're going to have uh, assessed as we move forward, and it, it will be part of phase two you know, somewhere down the line at a date yet, yet to be determined. So just to be, just to be clear, so uh, any community organizations you may be wondering about are, are still gonna operate as they have been operating for the past couple of months uh, for the next uh, few weeks anyways. Uh, a few points that I guess are worth repeating uh, for this week, because uh, we had several inquiries even uh, this morning uh, regarding uh, businesses in general uh, about uh, concerns raised about uh, businesses within the uh, uh, community proper or in the residential areas, concerns about how business operate, concerns about ownerships of businesses and things of that nature have been coming to the task force. Uh, I mean, some of these are very valid concerns, but again, from, from a task force perspective, that, that's, that's not what we're here for. If you have those concerns, I, I suggest you, know, you send them off to, to, uh, to council, you know, and then that could have a, that could have a discussion you know, in, in a different forum. The task force, we're here strictly to look at the issues regarding you know, the health and safety and to mitigate the impacts of the COVID-19 virus uh, within our community. Uh, and that's, that's our mandate, and that's what we want to make sure we keep, we keep focused on. Uh, as Lisa mentioned, you know, we also looked this week, we talked about modifying a directive, so to allow for, for gatherings up to, up to eight people uh, outside uh, and, in a safe manner, obviously respecting uh, social distancing. Uh, that's something that we, we felt was, it, it was timely because, you know, as, again, as things evolve, uh, people's uh, mental well-being and social well-being is, is equally as important as the risk of, of contracting a uh, COVID virus. And as long as it's done safely and done, done in, in, in a controlled manner, uh, no, we believe it, that, that it was time for us to take that next step, and that has been uh, uh, well received you know, uh, within the community, and I, I know people are, are, uh, are glad to hear that. Uh, so again, that's, you're welcome to gather up to eight people in your, in your yard, you know, in your, on, your de on your back deck, if, that's, if you're lucky enough to have a deck that can accommodate those people, but please you know, do it um, you know, in, a, in, a, in a very safe manner. Uh, I noticed this also, you know, with the business opening, uh, with uh, some of the new measures in terms of allowing gatherings of, of, uh, of, of people, also have, have raised some, some fears and some anxi anxieties in, in certain individuals in the community, and, and I respect that and I understand that. You know, and obviously, you know, uh, you know, as a public safety commissioner, I also share some of those anxieties and some of those fears, but I also understand the need for us to keep, uh, keep moving uh, moving forward in, in a measured uh, way. But if, if you are you know, fearful in any way, I mean, what I, I would say is you, know, you have control over your property, your, your quarter acre as we commonly refer to it, right? Who comes onto your property, who comes into your home, who comes in, in, into your, your yard is something that's certainly under your control. And if you don't feel comfortable uh, with an individual or individuals, I mean, by all means, that, that's your right to do so. And I totally respect that and understand. Uh, everybody has a different level of, of um, uh, I guess, tolerance to, to a level of, of fear or anxiety. And, uh, and that's always to be respected because uh, everybody's different. And, and we, we're trying our best to move uh, the community along in, in a way that is, uh, uh, has at least some own anxiety, at least some own risk, but we understand that uh, everybody has a different way of looking at it. So uh, I hope people understand the fact that on how we're trying to move things forward is, is, is to ensure that uh, we don't remain stagnant, that we don't uh, uh, have measures in place that will no longer be relevant. We rather have modifications to, to, um, to various directives to make them more uh, accommodating, to make them uh, more uh, relevant and, and, and people could respect them easier, to, to have change done in a safe manner rather than have people make changes on their own because of anxiety or because of stress and do things in an unsafe manner. 
So, so the, the, that was, again, some of the way we had to continue um, moving forward. Uh, with that, we have, um, uh, we had one additional measure today, you know, to talking about uh, uh, no business openings, because as, as we speak today, you know, uh, Ganawaga is restricted to residents only. So we did have to make a, a, a modification uh, to that uh, directive, effective uh, Monday, to allow for commerce to take place, so people could be allowed in, in, in the community uh, for, for that purpose. Uh, and uh, honestly, to come here and uh, be a little more details on how that's going to work out and how, how that will be, uh, be monitored, uh, the Chief Peacekeeper, Dwayne Zachary, is here to, to speak to that. And I'll leave it to him. And with that, uh, have a great, safe weekend, Ganawage, and I'll see you again soon. On the Good afternoon, Ganawage. Um, I think it's important to go back a little bit and talk about some of the things that uh, Lisa and Lloyd touched on uh, prior to me coming up here. Uh, it takes the whole community to be a part of this, right? We're really looking forward to your continued cooperation. It's always been uh, vital to our success. I think if you look at some of the statistics that are going on around us, um, Ganawage has done really well, and that's uh, mostly because Ganawage has participated and cooperated so much. Um, so having said that, thank you very much. And I'll go a little bit into uh, the new measures that are going to be in place beginning Monday for business to begin. So non-residents are only allowed on the territory for the purposes of trade and commerce. Okay, so that means they can come to businesses, they can uh, make their purchases, and we're asking that as soon as their, their transactions are completed, that they leave the community, so that way we don't have uh, huge numbers of people, non-residents in the territory, right? We're looking forward to the cooperation of the businesses as well as the employees in there. We're hoping that the employees and business owners, managers, what have you, that they cooperate and that they're being extra vigilant with their employees and their clients to ensure that everybody gets through this safely. Um, as many people have said before, this is really new. There's no playbook for this. So we're hoping that uh, as we open up, right, we don't start to get many more uh, positive cases, right? We don't want people coming here who have the, uh, the virus. So we're hoping that people are doing all of the screening and taking all, the, all of the precautions seriously. It's vital for all of us to do our part. Um, Non-residents are going to be uh, asked to leave the territory between the hours of, uh, prior to the hours of 6 a.m. and 10 p.m., right? So 6 p.m., 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., excuse me, <laughs> 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., people are permitted in the territory, right? But afterwards, people are no longer permitted in the territory, and your Gunnawaga peacekeepers will be out there on the road. They'll be checking for this. They'll be uh, stopping vehicles. They'll be checking who's in these cars to make sure that people are adhering to these directives. The safety and security of our community is paramount, and we want to make sure that, that the community feels safe. As Lloyd said prior, prior to me coming up here, you know, like we're, we're we know that people are, are worried and concerned about what's going to happen going forward, right? So Monday, June 1st, businesses are going to be opening. There will be um, non-residents in and around the community, right? But uh, your Ganawaga peacekeepers are going to be out there ensuring that people adhere to these uh, directives. If you feel like uh, people aren't doing what they need to do, please call us. We'll go and we'll check to make sure that things are going right. We want to make sure that things go uh, as smoothly as possible and as safely as possible, but we need your cooperation. We're looking forward to your cooperation. And you know, it, it's, it's vital, you know, and I, I know I said it a lot. I've said it in, in um, past visits to this, uh, to the Facebook updates. Please, we need your cooperation. Um, community members, business owners, managers, the employees themselves. If you don't feel safe, if you feel like there's an issue, then do something about it. And if you feel, you know, like there's, there is a really big issue, 
contact the Gunnawaga peacekeepers. We'll go there, we'll intervene, we'll help you if we can. All of the officers are working really hard to ensure the safety and security of our community and we're relying on your usual cooperation. Now. Right, thank you very much, Duane. And uh, just a reminder that uh, we talk about being open for commerce. And uh, just to reiterate that if you're listening right now and you're uh, uh, from somewhere else, if you're watching from anywhere other than Gahnawage, you're certainly welcome to be here for commerce starting on Monday. But once you're done, uh, there's no hanging around. And that's only for, for safety purposes. That's all that's about. Uh, before we leave, just a couple of notes here, some housekeeping. Um, Lisa mentioned this uh, the other day, the uh, pamphlet here on COVID-19. How can I protect myself, my family, and my community? These will be in the post office boxes, if not tomorrow, certainly by Monday. So we welcome you to uh, take a look. It's a nice little presentation here. has a lot of great information. Um, as Lloyd sa said earlier, the uh, inspectors are available uh, probably as we speak, as well as Saturday and Sunday to prep for the opening. So if you'd like to get an inspection done, you can call 450-632-0635 or by email COVID-19 inspections at mck.ca. With that, We'd like to th thank you for taking the time to join us this afternoon. We wish you a great weekend, a safe weekend. Remember, stay clean, stay apart, and if you're uh, not feeling well, stay home and get tested as well. So take care of yourselves, have a good weekend, and we'll see you next time. Yao Ko Dano, Onigiwai.